Tonight on the Civil War Channel, we will be reporting on the madness of John Brown. We will give you all the facts on what you need to know. People wonder, who was John Brown? Well, he was a revolutionary abolitionist in the USA. He told people about the practice to arm revolting against slave states to abolish slavery forever. As you can see, he was very passionate about ending slavery. He would stop at nothing to free slaves. John Brown believed in holy war. He believed if sla slaves had weapons, they could and would rise against their masters and abolish slavery. He thought that if they fought against their masters, they could finally be free forever. He also played a big role in Kansas during the 1850s. Abolitionists like John Brown sent anti-slavery settlers into Kansas, hoping to establish Kansas as a free state. Pro-slavery forces sent their own settlers into Kansas to colonize the territory as a slave state. The struggle between the two groups turned into a bitter conflict, which turned into violence. It turned into open warfare and mass murder between the groups. This is when John Brown first became famous in Kansas. John Brown had a very well thought out plan for ending slavery. Brown led the Potawatomi Massacre, which killed five men in 1856. This occurred in Bleeding, Kansas. He made his name in the unsuccessful raid at Harper's Ferry in 1859. Later that year, he was tried and executed for treason, murder, and conspiracy. Brown was called the most controversial of the 19th century Americans. His actions are the ones that pushed people over the edge. People said his plan caused the North and South to go to war. The raid at Harper's Ferry led to the Civil War. John Brown had led the attack on pro-slavery people in Kansas. He planned to attack slave owners in Virginia. To carry out his plan, he needed weapons. Part of his plan was to steal weapons from the Army's arsenal at Harper's Ferry on October 16th. He and 21 other men, black and white, planned to raid. Federal states to soldiers stopped them, killing some of them. Brown was taken to prison and then hung. His actions showed that the struggle over slavery was just beginning to grow. Compromising was growing harder and harder. John Brown's actions were very effective. People called him very controversial and bad. Now to Gabby with Dred Scott versus Sanford. Hello, I am Gabby Griner reporting to you with Dred Scott on the Civil War Channel. Who is Dred Scott? He was a slave who lived in the free state of Illinois, but then moved into the slave state of Missouri. He appealed to the Supreme Court in hopes of being granted his freedom. He tried to sue, but the court ruled against him. This case was called Scott v. Sanford. In the Supreme Court, Chief Justice Roger B. Taney wrote the majority opinion for the court. It stated that because Scott was black, he was not a citizen and therefore had no right to sue. The result of the ruling is that Scott was unable to sue, and the decision declared the Missouri Compromise of 1820 unconstitutional. So, all blacks couldn't become citizens, and slavery was permitted in all the country's territories. The North was shocked because they had been content to accept slavery as long as it was confined within its present borders. The South argued that its hostile territorial governments could obstruct their right to bring their slaves into a territory by refusing to protect that right. Southern supporters of slavery claimed that the Dred Scott decision was essential to the preservation of the Union. This ruling pushed the North and South towards war. Tension rose between the North and South because the South would lose some agriculture, meaning the South would have to find people to replace slaves to pick their main source, which was cotton. Now you know a little more information about the Dred Scott versus Sanford investigator. Next reporting about the Civil Compromise about the Compromise of 1850 is Tasha on the Civil War. Thank you, Gabby. Hello, I'm Tasha Kennedy reporting to you on the Compromise of 1850. Many people have been asking, what exactly is the Compromise of 1850? Well, the Compromise of 1850 is the written document that stated the states of the U.S. could enter the Union as a slave state or non-slave state. The Compromise of 1850 solved the problem of slavery dividing the states. The Compromise said that Northern California could enter the Union as a free state. It gave the states the right to choose if they wanted to be anti-slavery or pro-slavery. The Compromise of 1850 also added five new laws. One of the laws added in the United States was that you cannot buy or, slaves or sell slaves in the Washington, D.C. Both the North and the South got what they wanted out of the Compromise of 1850. Northern states be could become non-slave states and Southern states could become slave states. The Compromise of 1850 served its purpose to keep the country united. But this solution was only temporary. 
Little did they know that behind them would be the bloodiest war the United States had ever seen, the Civil War. The North wanted to unite together, but the South had other plans and wanted to break away from the Union. Now to, Dar to Darren on the Kansas-Nebraska Act. I'm Darren Dunning, reporting here from the Kansas-Nebraska border. During my research, I've dug up some dirt on Kansas and Nebraska. Just before the Civil War, these two states were territories, causing quite a disturbance. On May 30th, 1854, Congress passed a new act regarding slavery in these territories. Kansas and Nebraska draft was passed because the territories Kansas and Nebraska wanted to choose if they had slavery or not. The act revealed the Missouri Compromise that said slavery was allowed north of the latitude 30 degrees 30. The author was Stephen Douglas. He wanted political peace. Sadly, almost all Republicans were against the bill. The act helped push the North and South to war. The South didn't like that the North just voted an act and repealed the act made by the South. Then the South broke away from the United States. The North didn't like that the South broke away. Well, that's all I've got for you. This has been the Civil War Channel with me, Darren Dunning, Melina, Maddie, Gabby, and Tasha. Have a nice night, Mark.